In the world of heavy equipment, few names carry the weight and respect of the haul pack. For nearly half a century, these remarkable machines moved mountains of earth, transformed open pit mining, and set the standard that every other manufacturer would be forced to follow. This is the story of how a brake company, a visionary engineer, and a revolutionary design changed the mining industry forever. The story begins in the early 1950s with the Westinghouse Air Brake Company. For decades, this Pittsburgh-based company had been synonymous with one thing, railway air brakes. Their systems stopped trains across America and business was good, but the company's leadership saw an opportunity to diversify. In 1952, Westinghouse Air Brake Company, known as Wabco, made its first move into construction equipment by purchasing Leroy Air Tools and industrial drills. It was a modest beginning, but what came next would prove far more significant. In 1953, Wabco made a deal that would reshape the company's future. They purchased the construction machinery business of Robert Gilmore Le Tourneau, one of the most innovative earth-moving equipment designers in American history. This acquisition gave Wabco an instant lineup of proven machinery, including scrapers, rubber-tired dozers, and various attachments. The purchase price brought them manufacturing facilities in Peoria, Illinois, Tokoa, Georgia, and even Rydalmere, Australia. The newly formed company was called the Letourneau Westinghouse Company. However, there was a notable gap in their product lineup. While they inherited Letourneau's famous Tourner Rocker articulated rear dump trucks, they lacked a true high-capacity off-highway hauler designed for the demanding work of open pit mines and major construction projects. Wabco continued expanding through acquisition. In 1955, they purchased J.D. Adams, adding motor graders to their catalogue. They later acquired Scoopmobile to include front-end loaders, but company leadership recognised something important. The real growth opportunity lay in the off-highway truck market. To fill this critical gap, Wabco made perhaps their most important hire. In December 1955, they brought in Ralph H. Cress as a consultant to design a new line of off-highway trucks at their Peoria headquarters. Ralph Cress was no ordinary engineer. Born in 1904, he had spent years studying what made trucks work and, more importantly, what made them fail. He attended night school at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology from 1933 through 1939, earning his engineering degree while working. During World War II, he served in the Transportation Corps and received the Legion of Merit for his work producing improved cargo hauling equipment for the military. Before joining Wabco, Cress had served as general manager of Dart Truck Company, where he had already made his mark by being the first to use power steering exclusively on a truck enabling the creation of larger machines like the Dart 75 TA. When Cress sat down to design the new truck for Wabco, he approached the problem with fresh eyes. He studied the existing machines on the market and identified their weaknesses. Traditional off-highway trucks of the era used packs of leaf springs to cushion shock loads. These did a reasonable job, but they were high maintenance, especially on rough haul roads. Over time, they would flatten out, occasionally shed leaves, and transfer punishing vibrations to both the chassis and the driver. Cress also recognized several fundamental truths that would guide his design. Tires are not suspensions. Driver comfort is essential for productivity, and reducing shock loads on structures allows for more efficient design overall. The result was revolutionary. Cress configured a truck with a short wheelbase and a high angle of turn, features that improved maneuverability in tight pit environments. He specified a deep, sloped, flat body that would become known as the V-type body for better load retention. But his most significant innovation was the suspension system. Cress replaced the troublesome leaf springs with oil-filled, nitrogen gas pressurized cylinders. Wabco called this system Hydrair and it would change everything about off-highway truck design. The Hydrair suspension was an oleo pneumatic system, meaning it used both oil and compressed gas to absorb impacts. When the truck hit a bump, the suspension cylinder would compress, forcing oil through carefully sized orifices while compressing the nitrogen gas above. This slowed the compression movement. 
When the wheel extended again, larger orifices allowed faster movement. The result was a variable rate suspension that automatically adjusted to different loads and road conditions. This was completely new to the industry. The Hydra ride suspension gave the truck an incredibly smooth ride compared to anything else on the market. More importantly, it dramatically extended the life of the truck's chassis by absorbing the punishing impacts that would destroy leaf spring trucks. Wabco patented the Hydra design and it would make them considerable money over the years as other manufacturers were eventually forced to adopt similar systems. In 1957, the first haul pack trucks rolled out of the Peoria plant. The initial models were a 30-ton rear dump and an 80-ton tractor-trailer bottom dump coal hauler powered by a 450-horsepower Cummins engine. The very first Le Tourneau Westinghouse truck had a memorable debut. It left the Peoria factory and led the 1957 Thanksgiving Day Parade, then continued 25 miles west to its first job at the Midland Mine. These early machines were mechanical drive vehicles using conventional engines and powertrain systems similar to other trucks of the era. But the combination of the optimized frame design, the revolutionary Hydra suspension, and the efficient V-type body set a new standard. The haul pack quickly proved itself in operation. Mines that adopted these trucks found their haulage costs dropping and their productivity increasing. The 35-ton model became one of the most prolific early offerings, with over 1,000 units eventually produced. Buyers could specify either Cummins or Detroit diesel power to suit their existing fleet requirements. By 1961, the truck line had expanded to include 22, 27, 32, 42 and 60-ton sizes. The haul pack name became so dominant in the industry that it eventually became a generic term applied to any type of rear dump truck. As payloads increased, the mechanical drivetrain became the limiting factor. The diesel engine, torque converter, mechanical transmission and differential grew increasingly heavy and expensive to maintain. Something had to change. In 1965, Wabco introduced the model 120A, a groundbreaking truck that marked their entry into electric drive technology. Powered by a 930 horsepower Fairbanks Morse diesel engine, the 120A was the largest off-highway two-axle truck manufactured to date. Instead of a mechanical transmission, it used a DC electric drive system with motors in each rear wheel hub. The advantages were immediate and significant. Electric drive eliminated the troublesome mechanical transmission entirely. The wheel motors provided independent power to each drive wheel, improving traction and control. Dynamic retarding used the wheel motors as generators to provide continuous downhill braking without overheating traditional friction brakes. The 120A was soon upgraded to 120-ton capacity with a GM 1000 horsepower engine and was also offered as a rear dump tractor trailer capable of carrying 160 tons. Under American Standard Ownership, which had acquired Wabco in 1968, the company continued developing ever larger models. By 1970, they offered a 150-ton model, and by 1975, the 170C. All were electric drive, two-axle units. In 1970, Wabco began testing its most ambitious creation yet, the Model 3200. This three-axle monster was equipped with a General Motors 16-cylinder locomotive engine developing 2,000 horsepower. It measured 24 feet wide and over 52 feet long. The 3200 was the largest off-highway truck in series production at the time. Its initial 200-ton rating was quickly raised to 235 tons. The later 3200B model, introduced in 1974, was rated at 250 tons using a 2,250 horsepower engine. The truck employed a diesel-electric drive system to power tandem rear axles, with approximately 48 units built before production ended in the early 1980s. These machines found homes in the largest open pit mines in the world. The haul pack trucks passed through several corporate owners while maintaining their engineering excellence. In 1968, Wabco became part of American Standard Company, a conglomerate better known for bathroom fittings than mining equipment. In 1984, 
Wabco became a division of Dresser Industries. The entire truck line was revamped, and the Wabco name was dropped. The new Dresser model designations reflected the gross vehicle weight of each vehicle, ranging from the 35-ton Model 140M to the 240-ton 830E. The biggest truck to bear the Dresser Hall Pack name was that 830E. It was powered by two General Electric DC motors, one in each rear wheel hub, driven by a 2054 flywheel horsepower 16-cylinder Detroit diesel electric generator. The truck featured state-of-the-art electronic engine control and an advanced monitoring system protecting 54 critical functions. In 1988, Japan's Komatsu Limited and Dresser Industries formed a joint venture called Komatsu Dresser Company for manufacturing and marketing construction and mining equipment in the Western Hemisphere. By 1994, Komatsu had purchased all remaining shares, making KDC a wholly owned subsidiary. The hall pack name was quietly discontinued around 1998 to 1999, and trucks were thereafter known as Komatsu machines. But the legacy lived on, the Komatsu 930E, launched in 1996, was a direct descendant of the Hall Pack line. With a payload rating up to 320 tons and featuring the first use of AC motors for electric wheel drive in this class, it became the best-selling ultra-class haul truck in the world, with over 1,900 units sold by 2016. The Komatsu 830E, evolved from the Dresser 830E, became the best-selling electric 240-ton class truck ever produced. These machines, still rolling through mines around the world today, trace their heritage directly back to Ralph Kress and that first hall pack that led the Thanksgiving Day Parade in 1957. Ralph Kress left Wobco in 1962 when Caterpillar recruited him to design their range of haulers. At Caterpillar, he developed the company's first off-highway truck, the 769, introduced in 1963, as well as a line of 85-ton, 105-ton and 240-ton electric drive trucks. After retiring from Caterpillar in 1969, Kress joined his son Ted at Kress Corporation, where he continued developing innovative haulers, including trucks with 90-degree steering capability. Ralph Kress passed away in 1995, but his influence endures. In 1998, at the Haulage 2000 conference, his 1957 haul pack design was recognized as the truck configuration of the future. In 2001, he was inducted into the National Mining Hall of Fame, which referred to him as the father of the off-highway truck. Look at any modern 400-ton payload, two-axle, six-tired rear dump truck with its V-bottom dump body and hydraulic suspension. They look remarkably similar to that original Crest design from nearly seven decades ago. From a brake company's bold diversification to the minds of the modern world, the Hall Pack story represents one of the most successful chapters in heavy equipment history. The Hall Pack line proved to be the best performing sector for every company that owned it, outlasting the scrapers, wheel dozers, graders, and front end loaders that eventually disappeared from their catalogues. Today, Komatsu mining trucks continue to work around the clock in operations from Australia to Chile, from Canada to South Africa. The smaller Komatsu haul trucks are distinctly Japanese in design, but the larger trucks, the giants that move mountains, still trace their heritage back to American haul pack design routes. The Hydra suspension still smooths the ride. The electric wheel motors still provide the torque. The V-type body still retains the load. And in every sense that matters, the spirit of Ralph Kress and that first Thanksgiving Day truck still rolls through the pits. The hall pack name may be gone, but its legacy is carved into the earth itself, one massive load at a time.